What is up, humans? Colin here, the Wild CEO. I really need to WD-40 my mic arm. I don't know if you can hear that. Ear, or ear, or. Okay, so we're gonna talk today about the paleo diet and the mistakes and how to avoid them. Now, paleo diet is the diet that really was a light bulb moment for me. It was an epiphany because it was not about food quantity and how many calories you're eating, but it was more about quality. What is the quality of the food you're consuming? And to me, this is a first principle of human health. The foundation of wild foods, the foundation of my life, what I feed my kids, the fam, myself, is what is the quality of the ingredient? Because the reality is when you get quality down and you're sourcing really high quality foods, you're not eating seed oils and other toxic things that come from the mass produced, you know, monocropping, big food, big pharma nonsense that is out there. If you're not consuming those foods and you're just focused on really good quality food, your everything else, like everything else is so much easier. Now, I, I mean in life, period, but let's just talk about food specifically. So what is easier with food is that it almost doesn't matter how many carbs you eat. Now, of course, you can overdo carbs and sugar for sure, but it's like even if you're doing carbs, even if you're doing grains and you're making homemade sourdough or you're doing gluten-free pasta, things like that, you can actually be way more flexible in your diet so that you don't actually have to do something that is strict uh, paleo and it's going to take you about 80% of the way there. And for most people, like that's massive because just getting off of the standard American diet and all the really low quality fake foods that make it up is life changing for most people. Okay. So let's get into this real quick. What are the mistakes you're going to make if you're going to follow a paleo diet? All right. One, not following the rules. Now I just said there, if you got the core first principle of the paleo diet down, which is food quality, and this is the foundation of every diet, not just paleo, but if you get that down, you can actually ignore mistake one a little bit, right? You can be more flexible. And I think most people should be because you're going to adhere to your diet longer and you're more likely to stay with it if you have a little bit of flexibility and you have a little bit of grace towards yourself instead of becoming obsessed or too strict or becoming food neurotic. Now, we all kind of go through these, I feel like. So it's not necessarily the end of the world if you go through your food neurosis stage, right? Because you kind of learn this and you add more foods in later on and then you can have an idea of how your body responds to them, et cetera. So this is very much like an individual thing. Some people do better with all or nothing. Uh, some people do better going straight cold, cold turkey and not having like cheat days. Some people do good with a once a week cheat meal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so if you're the type of person that is gonna do better with going strict because you have some major sugar addiction problems and major, major food issues, then I do recommend you actually stick to the rules and go super strict. And in this case, for paleo diet, you would avoid grains, dairy, and processed foods. You'd eat lots of fruits, vegetables, and meat. You'd stay away from sugar and processed foods. And you would, of course, avoid harmful chemicals and pollutants, but most of that is gonna be leaving your diet if you're not eating all the other processed crap. And then, of course, you'd be getting exercise. Uh, exercise, walking, etc., in conjunction with the paleo diet, freaking game changer, okay? Uh, mistake number two, not being realistic, okay? <sighs> I'm torn on this one a little bit, but it kind of goes, again, with mistake number one and knowing who you are and what's going to be better for you. Is it going to be better to go really, really strict and be hardcore with it, or is it better to be a little bit more flexible? So being realistic with yourself based on your history and who you are is really what you what you need to accomplish. And I think that's what mistake number two is referring to is most people go into it and they visualize themselves as being a completely different person. They're not taking into account their past failures or successes with diet. They're not taking into account just their proclivities and eating out and doing things with friends and all the other variables that go into controlling what you eat. Like there's a lot of things here and you can't just have wishful thinking to think you're going to be perfect right? At least if you don't have any history of being perfect. Now, if you've done this in the past and you're the type that goes hardcore cold turkey and you get into it, great. Like then do that. Then you being realistic with yourself is actually that. Is, is, you've done it before, you'll do it again, right? Now mistake number three, going overboard. So, I mean, you know, again, it's very person dependent, but maybe you want to like kind of ease in and or out of this diet. So maybe you don't want to go like tomorrow you're gonna to wake up and your strict paleo and all the other foods and habits that you've been doing for years are just like out the window, right? It might not be great to just go really strict really fast. It might be good to ease into it or even have 
a ladder, a step up or a step down ladder where you give yourself kind of a plan for a week and then you have a plan for the second week and the third week. And then after a month, maybe you've eliminated most of those things and you're doing this and then you're gonna do this for a period of time. And then maybe you introduce cheat meals later. Maybe you don't, right? As with anything, as with a business or building something or engineering a bridge, having a plan that is well thought out, that is well considered, that is based on fact and truth and not wishful thinking is going to be massive for actually being successful. Mistake number four, being too restrictive. Again, person dependent, uh, some strategies to deal with this though. If you do struggle with being too restrictive is find maybe some paleo friendly dessert options. Find like what is gonna be your cheat meal. Like you, you don't need to go to the donut store and eat like the worst food on the planet, but maybe you can have some yogurt with berries or maybe find like a really good organic vanilla ice cream or something like that. Like find some strategic options that make you feel like you're not being too restrictive. Uh, again, this is more of a mental thing, but diets are a mental thing. Like sticking to a diet is purely mental. So you do need to consider these things. Uh, there's some strategies here, like finding a paleo friendly restaurant, etc. I would say on this, another note is that some people don't cook. Following a diet like paleo or really anything and not being able to cook is a huge, huge disadvantage because you're gonna get sick of bland food. I mean, it just, it is what it is. You live in an environment where there is tasty food all freaking around you. We can get food highs all day long. Some of the tastiest food that literal, literally humans have ever known exists today, right? It's hard to know that and your body knows it, your mind knows it, your subconscious knows it. And it might even be in front of your face. So you have to actually ignore it. And then you gotta go to like this bland piece of like rubbery chicken or beef or like frozen thing that you have. And you're like looking at this and you're like, that does not sound good or look good. And then you're looking at all these other options that are literally lighting up the reward centers in your brain as you visualize yourself gorging on them, right? That's a major imbalance. That's a, that's a very binary, like far extreme thing. And if you don't know how to cook, it's going to be hard to deal with that. So like you got to find out a solution. You got to find a solution to get tasty food. And the thing about paleo is it's not hard to do, right? A little bit of know-how, a little bit of cooking, you can do it. It's amazing. But I highly recommend figuring out what the actual food you're going to eat is and how it's going to get prepared into you. And then finally, mistake number five, and I saw and there's an error here, uh, consuming too many processed foods. So you can find paleo-ish foods like maybe the, what are those chips? Uh, the cassava flour chips by that one company. I mean, they're out here in Austin. It's it's slipping me, but these cassava trips are loved by like paleo CrossFitters, etc., because they're a grain-free kind of root-based thing, but they're loaded with carbs and they're highly, highly, highly refined and they're spiking insulin like crazy. It's not a good food. So if you get into the habit of eating a bunch of paleo processed foods, like you're not doing yourself any favors. You know, you, you can actually very quickly derail what would have been a good diet, what would have been leading you to fat loss. You can derail that very quickly, even if you're eating quote unquote paleo or like another example, like keto, right? You can very quickly sabotage your results and actually gain weight eating this way. So you, you need to understand, like, it's not just about what the label says. It's also about the quality of the food, what form it comes in, and is it processed? That's really big deal. You want to stick with and opt for whole foods that you make yourself, right? So if you want chips, make them from scratch. Grab a potato and take that and get that to a chip. Not only will you eat less, but you'll also expend energy making that. It's just a better thing all around. All right, number six, not engaging in physical activity. I mean, this is just like obvious, but like if you are doing a diet because you want to lose weight or improve your body composition, then you need to move. If you want to live, you need to move. If you want to not get heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, or any other things, you need to move. I really shouldn't have to say anything else about it, but it's actually quite amazing that so many humans today in our modern environment have no actual physical activity in their lives. Like you could literally make it so your entire life is set up where the only activity you expend is going from the bed to the chair, to the couch, to the kitchen, to the fridge, maybe to the car, maybe from the car parking at the front of the parking lot to like the store. Maybe you walk around the store a little bit to the checkout, back to the car, back to the house. And in fact, 
most people that like work nine to fives and they kind of like wake up, go to work, come home, maybe they go to the store, like that's their life. And if you're working in a job that has you sitting a lot or in an office or not really moving much, just think the majority of your time is spent in a stationary state. Crazy. So I hope to give you some ideas about how to be successful on a paleo diet, but actually how to be successful on any diet, actually. Uh, these are common mistakes people make on all diets, right? <sighs> so yeah, it's gonna come down to having a plan, using your mind, thinking of who you are, what you've done in the past, not just falling into like wishful thinking, pie in the sky type of uh, hope, which is what that is, <laughs> and being realistic along the way and having grace with yourself so that when you fall off or you make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. All right, subscribe, get more like this, and check out wildfoods.co for premium earth-sourced nature's fuel, the best quality ingredients and supplements on the planet to help you on your weight loss, weight gain, just life journey. Use code WILDCEO for 15% off your entire order.